Well, good morning, everyone. I hope your, uh, your trip to the MCG was better than mine this morning. I cut it a little bit late with traffic, so uh, yeah, but we got, we got here. Um, my name is Matt Jenkins. I work for the Oracle Construction and Engineering Global Business Unit within Oracle. And uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, collaborative lean scheduling. So uh, agenda for today, really sort of brief, give you a quick conceptual overview of what we mean by lean scheduling and what the Oracle Primavera cloud solution does. Uh, then we'll be uh, going into a demo. I'll walk you through the, the demonstration of our capability, and then finally we'll just wrap up with some with some benefits. So, um, concept concept overview. Really, we see this as the next generation of scheduling practices. So, um, Oracle Primavera has been in the project management, project scheduling, and resource management space for decades. Um, this solution enhances on, um, on our legacy, and essentially it's a cloud-based um, mobile-enabled solution, so cloud and mobile, and really we blend the critical path methodology, the scheduling capability, with lean task management. And that is aimed at driving better collaboration, better coordination, and ultimately better project outcomes. So why, why are we doing this? So uh, as I said, Primavera has been in the scheduling space for, for decades. We're you know, a best in class scheduling solution. We've got that great critical path engine. And what we've seen is essentially size and complexity of schedules um, increased significantly since we started in this game. Um, we estimate probably today 10 times larger schedules than 25 years ago. And, and that's happened for a couple of reasons, I believe. You know, one is we're probably undertaking more complex projects nowadays. But two, uh, because of the flexibility of the scheduling solution, we've ended up adding more and more granularity into the schedule. So we're starting to use the schedule as a task management solution, not as a critical path methodology solution. Um, so, yeah, 10 times larger. It would, what, what's the consensus in the room? Do you see larger schedules today if you've been involved in project scheduling than 10 years ago? You're seeing them grow? Hands up if you're seeing them grow. I'm going to try and get some audience participation. <laughs> Great. Um, it's certainly what I've seen. It's certainly what I've seen. And, I, and we obviously work across uh, various industries. So. That's part of the reason we're doing this. Um, if we look at an example of a, um, you know, a typical project site here, you can see you know, I've got various pieces of work that need to be completed, um, probably by different disciplines as well, all around the same time. So we require that coordination. You know, I've, got, I've probably got my electrical contractor doing the electrical work. I've got my plumbing contractor doing the, the plumbing work. And there's a lot of coordination that, that needs to occur when we, when we do this sort of work. We'll kind of be using this sort of example in the demo as well. So we'll, we'll, you'll see some of these um, tasks related to that sort of activity when we go through, through the demo. So to coordinate those tasks on site, um, we've still got our schedule. You know, and the schedule is still done well in advance. And as we get close to the project kicking off, it gets more and more detailed. Um, but what we've seen organizations adopt from a lean perspective is um, a manual approach, really. And this is, this, is, um, this is often what we see an activity on site. It's a whiteboard um, with sticky notes, days across the top of the white, whiteboard. So we've still got our schedule. That's, that's in place. But what's happening the week before we actually complete the work, we see this sort of activity. Um, occurring, occurring on site. Um, so a couple of photographs here. I like these photographs. Um, picture paints a thousand words and all that, but I also like it because uh, everybody looks really engaged and uh, busy in this collaborative approach, except for this one guy that looks 
Looks a little bit like he's reading the newspaper, but I think he's actually looking at the, the drawings um, needed, for the, uh, needed for the planning. So it's a good start, the manual approach, but we do see some, um, we do some, see some limitations with it as well. You know, it's, it's manual. It, it, it's, it's, not auto, it's, it's not digitized in, in, uh, in any way. We can't see within that, that whiteboard any sequencing logic between the tasks. We might plan them in a sequence, but we can't really visualize the fact that um, you know, the task on the, at the end of Thursday needs to be completed before the first task on Friday. There's no audit history here either, no analytics. We can't report and view, easily view our performance of these committed, committed tasks. I can't access this remotely either. Um, you know, I have to be in the room to, uh, to be engaged in this, in, in this process. And importantly, we feel there's, there's no blended concept. I'll be talking about the blended concept today, where we blend the schedule and we have visibility of the activities within the schedule with, with those tasks. So this is a good start. Lean, Lean's been around for a long time. We're not really changing what you're doing with the Lean, Lean construction methodology. Um, we're just trying to digitize it, enhance it, and bring some benefits from, from doing that into the process. So, what's the solution? So really, we, we stepped back and we looked at this from a, a, a process perspective. So, the process hasn't really changed either here. Again, we're just digitizing it, but we, we start by defining uh, phases of the project within the work breakdown structure. We then do our typical scheduling activity. So we're defining all of the activities within the schedule, when they're taking place, um, the durations of those activities, the, the critical path, if you like, the relationships between those, those activities as well. We then break into the lean world. So we, we now provide the ability to break those activities down into more granular details. So we're not doing it within the schedule itself. It allows us to simplify the schedule, not go as granular in the schedule, but we're providing the ability to subdivide our activities down into individual tasks. We can then commit those tasks. So if you're involved in the lean um, construction concept, you'll know it's, it, there's a lot of um, focus on the collaboration part of the, of the methodology. So. Um, you know, in that task office, we might be planning out what we're doing in the next week, um, and I might be asking Ashley here to, uh, to to commit that he can do the plumbing work on Friday, and Ashley Ashley commits in that environment. Yes, I'll, I can get that work completed by Friday, and we track that commitment. So we store the tr the commitment of the task in the system, okay, and the due date of that task as well. And then we provide the ability to monitor performance. So this is providing reporting feedback loop. How are we, how are we tracking against those committed tasks? So this is, uh, we'll go into this in the demo, but I thought I'd just um, quickly give you a bit of a look and feel here of the, the digitized planning board that we've, that we've created. So here you can see um, same concept as a whiteboard, same concept as sticky labels. On, on, on the whiteboard, but we've digitized this, this process. So um, here on the left-hand side, this is what we call the hopper. This is where I create my tasks for planning. I haven't planned them yet, um, but I create them in that hopper, and then I can drag them across to the dates that I want to um, complete them on. Um, here you see um, planning period that we're planning. So. Um, we can specify which period that we're planning with these tasks. It's typically kind of one week or two weeks, not, not much longer than that, but we provide, I think, up to six, six weeks um, um, visibility in this, in this view if, if that's what's needed. But generally, um, what I've seen is it's kind of one or two weeks sort of planning process. Here's the blended concept here. So within this view, I can see I've got visibility of my activities, and then I've got visibility of the tasks within those activities. So we're blending, we're ship, we're, we've got bi-directional integration between the schedule and the tasks, sharing that information two ways, 
providing visibility two ways. And then um, over on the right hand side here, um, my screen resolution, resolution is doing something funny to the uh, presentation, but um, a task summary bar, an easy way of navigating through the tasks within that we're looking at to this particular project. So we'll see, we'll see that in the, um, in, in the demo. I mentioned this as well at, at the beginning, um, cloud-based, mobile-based. So we've provided mobile apps here to be able to view all of the projects and the tasks um, on site to be able to commit to them. So we're putting the capability in the hands of the people on, on site in the field to be able to track progress on the tasks that have been planned within the planning period. If, if there are people in the audience that know Primavera P6, there's, a, there's a, an application called Team Member that allows you to track progress on the activities. This is a similar concept, but we're tracking progress against those committed tasks here, more task focused. Um, available on iOS or Android, um, it um, allows me to filter, it allows me to flag, it allows me to complete and, recom and commit and recommit tasks as well, so committing to those due dates. Uh, and it tracks and stores all that information from a reporting um, perspective also. We've also um, enabled touch screen capability for this as well. So really trying to anticipate how this, when this technology becomes more and more prevalent. Um, you know, I ordered a, a, a laptop recently, a new laptop, and it comes with touch screen um, technology built into it. I didn't particularly order that, but it's becoming more and more um, more and more of a standard technology. So you can, if you have a large touch screen, um, it, you can drag across with your finger the tasks, and it, much like you would do with the sticky notes in the, in the manual approach as well. Okay, any questions or comments on the concept before we move into the demo? Somebody's coming around with the um, microphone, I think. Thank you. Matt, um, can you give us a bit of insight how uh, this uh, interoperates with P6, or if it does, or if there's a roadmap to yep. book it in? Yep. Um, so standard integration with P6. You can pull the schedule directly from P6 into um, the schedule capability within Primavera Cloud. So this. Lean um, task management solutions sits within a solution called Primavera Cloud. Um, but standard bi-directional integration with P6 can also bring, um, bring it in from MSP as well if you wanted to. Do you have to push it back and forth or is it a live um, you, active? You can schedule it to run every however minutes you want to schedule it to run. So it just, it runs periodically based on your needs. So if you change something on, on the board in there, it'll push back into P6. Yep, okay. yep, yep. When that, when that process next runs, it'll just push that back into P6. And I'll show you, you, you we'll see the visibility from the schedule side in the demo. Um, I'll show it within Primavera Cloud, but we can also push that back to P6 as well. Cheers, thank you. Or the one at the front here. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. Um, will, is there an API that comes with this program, and can you pull information into non-Oracle products and push information back? Yep. Yep. So um, all of Oracle's products are built on an open standard philosophy. So we have APIs to get information in and out of our, of our solution, and that's the same. Same here as well. So yeah, full API support here. Cool. Uh, does it have some of the capabilities of other lean methods, like you know Kanban board and all that, so that you can create streams and all that? It has, yeah, it has the capability. We'll see it in the demo. 
to create what we call handoffs, which is that sequencing of tasks. Um, so the different sequences that are required, pre predecessors, successors, and, and some visibility of Slack within the tasks as well. Thank you. All right. Well, let's move on to the uh, to the to the demo um, here. So, I've got uh, essentially a recorded demo here that I'm going to narrate over. Okay. So, here you can see um, the the projects that we have access to within the solution. This is. On the left-hand side now, here I'm just showing the hopper. So here are the, the unplanned tasks that I have within the, the hopper on the left-hand side. Um, I have some tasks that don't, are not related to an activity, and I have some unplanned tasks that I have said are related to an activity, but um, I haven't planned them yet. So um, there's that blended concept again. And here we see that blended concept with the visibility. So I can see my activities, the gray bars here at the top of the page, and um, then my tasks within the activity, color coded based on the organization that's responsible to complete the task. So like the color coded sticky notes, we're color coding the tasks. Planning, planning window here on the, um, on the left hand side, um, you can see we're showing two weeks at the minute, and um, we're looking at that two-week period. I have um, views and filters available to me, but I also have this task summary page here as well. So here you can see um, a nice way of navigating around the tasks that we've got within this planning period. If I want to look at all of my overdue or due tasks, I can simply click on the summary page and, uh, and then click on the uh, tasks to navigate around the various tasks within the, uh, within the digi digital planning board here as well. Now, um, essentially, we're now going to start planning some of these unplanned tasks. I'm going to drag them across from the hopper on the left-hand side. Um, simple process, just drag them and place them under the activity. You'll notice when I did this, it, I tried to plan it on the Sunday automatically knew that that was a non-working day and put that task on the, uh, on, on the Monday for me. So it's a simple sort of drag and drop process, very sort of visual. Um, I can also use right click here just to create the task within, um, within the activity as well. So just a simple process, very easy to use, um, creating that task, pr providing some detail about the task. Um, identifying the organization responsible for the task, and, and you can see the color code there, and also the individual if, is, is optional. I'm assigning this to Nick here to uh, complete this task, and I'm just going to extend the duration to, to two days. And then we go into the handoff side. So this is that sequencing logic that I talked about. So you can see here I can define predecessors. Excuse me. So just defining that logic um, within the, the task, and I can visualize that logic as well. So I'm just going to show you that handoff sequencing logic of the tasks. So you can see there, I can see there's a particular sequence of tasks that need to be completed before the final task is completed. OK, now we're going to start completing some of the tasks. So part of this process, typically we're going back and looking at the previous week. What have we completed? Um, we can look at the committed dates. We can recommit tasks if we haven't done them as well, and then capture a reason as to why we missed the original commitment. Um, but very straightforward process here within the web application, just to click, click the completed icon, and that's automatically recording that completed 
status and date against the task. I might want to drag out a particular task here, the part of that process, you know, Ashley, can you complete the inspection um, on, 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 on Tuesday? No, I can't, but I can do it Wednesday. Drag that out, commit that, commit that, record that commitment that Ashley committed, and that's tracked within the system. I may also want to just drag out some of the, the unplanned tasks to a later week. So there's, you know, two, two weeks down the line here, I'm just dragging those tasks out and then saving all of those, all of those changes. So very visual, very straightforward to use. Um, could be used in that collaborative sort of um, setting where we're on site, we've got everybody in the room, we commit, we're agreeing and committing to those, to those tasks together. Um, and now I'm just gonna show you the mobile capability as well. So this is the progress app within Primavera Cloud. Um, yeah, pretty clear who built it there, I think. And uh, touch, touch um, um, auth authentication uh, enabled on the device here. And then you'll see that this is going to basically bring up um, visibility of all the projects that I have access to. It automatically syncs the information here. Um, uh, but I can also resync that at any, any stage. And that's that sort of uh, blended concept as well, bringing information from the tasks, from the activities, from the schedule. All into, uh, all into the view that we're going to look at next. So now let's have a look at the tasks. So I get a little bit of uh, a note that there's some overdue tasks, there's a pending task as well. Here are all the tasks that I have access to um, that have been assigned. And then I can use the filters at the bottom of the screen to look at tasks that are overdue. Um, here's my overdue task, or tasks that are pending as well, that are, that, are, that are about to become overdue. Simple filters at the bottom of the screen there. I can also do it like a type ahead search within here as well. So just looking for all my deck Decking uh, tasks there brings brings the, those up in the filter list. I can see information about the task, including collaborative discussions here as well. So we can have have discussions on the particular task. Here I'm asking Nick, or Nick's asking me rather, if uh, if I can confirm the commitment date. I can track all of that collaboration, enable that collaboration within the field as well. So um, use, just using that mobile device to drive productivity. And then um, ultimately I'm going to search for another task and we're going to mark it complete through the mobile device here as well. So looking for some work that I did on the walls and essentially just clicking that, um, that complete tick in the middle of the screen to mark this task as, uh, as complete then. That's my task completed. Um, easy, easy navigation of the mobile device as well, not trying to overcomplicate this, trying to keep it nice and simple for the field to just click and use. And I get, um, I can then synchronize that. So we have a disconnected mode as well. If you're in a remote site, you can sync to the, the device first of all, and then when you've got connectivity, you can resync back to the, uh, to the system. Final thing I'll show you here, um, we'll just go back to having a look at the, um, at, at the um, analytics. So really part, you know, part of the value of doing this within a digitized system is we can now start to report on it. So we can track performance, we can look at performance. So here you can see um, we're looking at a particular planning period within the inbuilt analytics. Um, you can set that planning window, reporting window as, uh, as you like. Looking at all of the organizations across the project here and using a standard metric as well, plan, project, percent, complete. Here I can see, you know, I've got uh, a certain number that have been committed um, and a certain number that have actually been completed. So starting to get visibility into 
missed commitments. And I can see that by company as well. So no, now starting to see that prime construction, um, we might have an issue um, with prime construction. They're missing a lot of committed dates here. Um, so, so I can see the reasons. I start to look at some of the trending as why we mi we're missing those commitments as well, inclement weather, access to the site, etc. And I can filter this, this analytics by a particular company. So if I want to filter down and start to have a look at prime construction here as to why they're missing some of their commitments, um, we get that real-time performance analytics within the tool as well. So a big benefit here of, of digitizing the process is to be able to report and track, on, track our, uh, our performance. And I think I'll just finish off here um, on the recording. Um, just wanted to show you that blended concept. So we're going to have a look at the schedule, the activities, and that visibility within the schedule of our lean tasks. So within Primavera Cloud here, we have uh, scheduling capability. Um, Primavera been in the scheduling business for decades. Of course, we've just lifted the um, critical path engine out of P6, and we're using it within, within Primavera Cloud here. Um, so you, if you're familiar with P6, this will look pretty consistent, um, looking at a particular activity here. But notice that um, I've got some icons here. I'm looking at a particular view. And against my um, activity, I've got visibility of tasks now. I've got a warning icon that it's telling me that my tasks are now outside of the end date of my schedule activities. So if I'm a planner, I'm getting visibility that there's some tasks, something happening on site that's potentially going to impact my schedule. Now we don't drive the critical path by the tasks, but we show this visibility, we show the warning, and then as a planner, it's my responsibility to decide whether I want to maybe reschedule, um, reschedule this particular activity. So that's that bi-directional, that's the blended concept. We think there's a lot of value in that, um, really, really providing that visibility two ways. Um, providing the schedule information across to the task and the task information across to the schedule in this view. Okay. Um, any questions on the demo before I just wrap up with the benefits? Yep, question down here. So you've got the concept of activities and tasks, and I take your activities are the same as activities in P6 and Microsoft Project. Yep. How are tasks represented when you, uh, when you Presumably, you export back to the project. You don't have a, 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 a live link. I understand that you're actually reading the database in P6. Um, how are the tasks represented in P6 in the project? Yes, yeah, so we have a new object in P6 called tasks. So we actually show that visibility in the, uh, in the P6 schedule now. So you can actually see the tasks within the P6 schedule. And, and what happens in Microsoft Project? Um, Microsoft Project, um, that would be kind of a, um, you'd have to create a mapping between um, the Primavera schedule and how you want to record those in, in, in MSP. So um, you'd have to have a placeholder in MSP if you want to track that information um, within MSP. Being Oracle, of course, we built the integration to our, to our own products and we, keep, we maintain that integration as well. So as each version continues of P6 and Primavera Cloud, We'll, we'll keep that bi-directional integration in sync. OK, so in, in PPM, if you've got the latest version, you'll see the task tab there underneath activity somewhere, would you? Correct. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And is that function available in P6? Yep. Yep. You can see the task within P6. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm making you work here, one at the back and then one at the other side. You can basically do a full lap. It's a good exercise for her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Santosh Terkam. I'm technical director for RISC. Hi, Santosh. Uh, just thank you very much. A fantastic uh, lean way of uh, doing the scheduling concept. Uh, I appreciate that. My question is that do we have inbuilt scheduled risk analysis within this cloud uh, software? 
platform. Do, do I have, have what, what yeah. analysis? Sorry, could you just repeat that? Scheduled risk analysis. The risk. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, we do. So um, this is one. The lean module is one um, module within Primavera Cloud. We also have a risk module. So um, the ability to risk profile your schedule and then um, mitigate those risks and then perform a Monte Carlo analysis on your risks. So your P80s, your P90s. Uh, giving you probability that you can complete the um, essentially complete the project on time and to and to budget. So that that is a, another capability within the Primavera Cloud. Um, if you're interested in that, come along to the booth later, and happy to give you a, a demo of that as well. So another related question is that with regard to um, after running the Primavera risk analysis or scheduled risk analysis using Monte Carlo simulation engine there. Whatever uh, the dates you get, P10, P50s, and P90s, can we translate that onto the cloud? You know, on the whiteboard, whatever the scheduled whiteboard you showed there, does it show this is the original task and this is the P10, this is the P90, P50 dates? Will it show that in that? We've got visibility within the risk module within Primavera Cloud. We don't show it within the task module. It's good because it's more directly related to the activities within the schedule, whereas these tasks are more granular than the activities. They sit, they sit within the activities, essentially. For risk-based uh, risk assessment, you need to have clarity and visibility with regard to what the P90 date would look like, because your P6 schedule is a deterministic way yep. of doing it. So if you don't have visibility to that and you have to go elsewhere to look for that, I think that I see some sort of a disconnect there. Okay. So, yep. Good. Come and see me later, and I'll show you. And I think you'll see that you get you get good visibility of the Monte Carlo analysis within the Primavera Cloud, um, and it's linked directly to the to, to the schedule. But but yeah, point taken. Point taken. Thanks, Matt. Brent Byford from Oricon. Um, can I, you explain the difference between steps in P6 yep. and task? Because yep. it seems like if you're going to the granularity of doing steps, then you're probably doing the same thing in the task. Yeah, good, good, good question. They, um, you know, when we were developing this capability for a while, and we were looking at how we would integrate across to P6, we did consider perhaps using steps um, as that as that integration point. But we decided instead to, to create the 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 direct task to task. Integration, and that's really because you know um, those tests, those steps that you're talking about within the schedule, can be used to drive um, the schedule percent complete, um, and they might be being used independently of the the lean the lean process here. So we had to provide both. Um, but you're right, you you know those steps do sit within within the schedule, and they are a breakdown of the of, of the activity as well that can be used to drive. Um, percent complete on the uh, on the activity, but two separate approaches. Really, this is very focused at the, the lean concept and the lean task management, and wrapped around this digitized um, board here and the and the functionality is that that whole methodology as well. Um, you know, there's a people, process, and technology part to this solution. So lean is all about that collaboration, working together as a, a project team focused on, on, on uh, project outcomes. Thanks, Matt. Um, I guess I'm just trying to understand as well, we predominantly use the Windows client, like I suspect most people. Is there a, will I be able to see these steps in the Windows client at some point? Um, yeah, that, 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 um, steps, sorry, I don't know whether that's available right now or whether that's, uh, yeah, um, I'll confirm, but we believe that's available in the client right now. Um, it, uh, like version 18, or is there another? Is there what, what's the latest version? Sorry, Late, latest version at the minute is 19.9 for the Windows P client for for P6 Professional. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, P6 Professional. You're right. Apologies. I was thinking Cloud is 18.8. Um, 18.8. 18.8. Yeah, I'm not, not seeing it in there. Unless, uh, yeah, what we, do, right what, we, what we do with our cloud version is we release monthly, monthly yeah. updates. Um, that's one of the benefits of being on the cloud is you get those updates earlier. But yeah, apologies, 18.8 is the, uh, the latest version. Yeah, predominantly like, I think a lot
lot of people here, we use the Windows client predominantly as yep. the tool. So any idea if there is a roadmap to push this stuff into the Windows client or yeah, just have this yeah, don't that's, know that's a there'll be a release. Do you know if they're going to put it in there, Ash? The tasks capability into the Windows client. Yeah, uh, well, I'll, we'll check for you. Yeah. yeah, we'll 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 check that. We believe so, um, but we'll check we'll check that, and we, we try and avoid talking about roadmap items Fair as on. much as we can as well. But um, but 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 yeah, the the concept is we're creating that um, that entity within P6, so it's going to be it's going to be. Uh, available however you access um, P6. All right. Thank you. No okay, um, lap completed. Thank you for that. Um, thanks for the questions as well. It's great. Uh, just just wrapping up then with the benefits. Um, really, you know, we see a benefit of reduced complexity. So we're trying to make that schedule skinnier. Um, you know, if I'm a planner. Imagine being able to reduce the number of activities I'm working on by, say, 50%. Right? A 500-line schedule is much easier to manage, maintain, update than a 1,000-line schedule. So that reduced complexity from a planner's perspective is important. From a PMO perspective, my visibility is much is improved. It's easier, again, to be able to see where I am on a project on a 500-line schedule than it is on a 1,000-line line schedule. So reduced complexity is important. We're driving the collaboration and coordination. The fact that I can access this solution remotely as well. So we can stop working on the tasks and the planning of the task within the week remotely. Uh, all of that is, is, is centralized then, of course. Productivity, um, again, the fact that we're putting those mobile capabilities into the hands of the, um, of the field users to be able to track task completeness, but, but, but also less rework. We, you know, we believe that there's less rework in a digitized um, environment. I'll tell you a quick story. I, when I was working in the UK, I was um, doing some work for a scaffolding company, and we were, uh, we were borrowing their site office for a, um, a couple of weeks. And it was a freezing, absolutely freezing cold day um, in, in the UK, which is why I moved to Australia. But, um, my job, I got in early, so I tended to turn the radiators on as soon as I got on to try and create a little bit of heat. So I, I got in early and I opened the door and this icy blast of wind came through the, through the site office. And I didn't realize it at, at the time, but there was one of these planning boards up on the wall and it blew about a dozen of the sticky notes off the wall onto the floor. Um, I spent the next half hour trying to stick them back on and hoping nobody would notice, which they never did, thankfully. But, uh, but you know, less, less rework with a digitized approach. That manual approach is good, but it has its, has its limitations. Uh, and then, um, of course, performance visibility, that ability of analyzing where, how we're doing against our committed tasks week by week, real-time analytics built into the, uh, built into the tool. Uh, this was just a, a statistic I, I found from the uh, Lean Construction Institute about, you know, why, why bother? Why bother doing Lean? So they analyzed, I think it was around 170 projects, something like that. Um, and they sort of categorized them into the best projects and typical projects. And, uh, and then essentially they looked at the correlation between where Lean was used on the project and the chances of then completing um, ahead of schedule or under budget. And they found a strong correlation between using lean and the likelihood of achieving that. So we're starting to get some really good evidence that lean is um, driving some better project outcomes here. And that's obviously why we're investing in, in, cr in creating this sort of solution. So that's everything I, I have for today. Um, really want to thank you for your attendance. When you do these sort of things, you always have a slight worry that you're going to be talking to an empty room. So uh, great, great to see so many of you here. Um, come and, come and uh, say hello at, uh, at the booth as well. We've got plenty of other capability within the Oracle suite, um, cost controls, scheduling, um, risk management as well. Please come and have a chat to us, and uh, it'd be great to see you there. Thanks, thanks very much, everyone. <laughs>